You rock, dude. Hey there, this is Mobile Agent TV, helping agents stay on the cutting edge coast to coast. Welcome to Mobile Agent TV. I am Michael Thorne of Remax Little Oak Realty in Langley, BC. And my co-host, as always, is Dave Falkworth from Bridgewater, New Jersey's Remax Preferred Professionals in the Enviro Realty team. Dave, how you doing? Uh, pretty good. I like this 8 o'clock stuff, you know. I mean, I'm sitting out here on the patio after I um, went to a networking happy hour party and... Uh, Everybody on the other end is having a good time, so this is this 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 is cool. This is really cool. I'm, everything's great here. How about yes. you? Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I mean, I wish I was in San Francisco with everyone, but my wife is in the middle of her master's program, uh, mm -hmm. and so you know, it's all hands on on, on deck for uh, for daddy duty. But uh, I've been following the tweets. I am highly jealous of how fun Inman Connect San Francisco seems to be, and we've got some people that are going to tell us all about it and what we've missed, and also get into talking about. Uh, Room, uh, which is a destination uh, marketing company, which is just blowing things up. It's uh, amazing what they're doing, and we really want to get into that. But one thing before we have to do that, since since Raj is on the show, I, I am going to mention his name, but I am legally obligated to mention Bomb Bomb. Uh, for all the viewers that are watching right now that are in Canada, we are dealing with a new legislation called Castle, which is the Canadian anti-spam law. Uh, which is really going to disrupt the way people market online through Facebook, uh, Twitter, and email. And Bomb Bomb on uh, Tuesday, July 22nd at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific is going to have a webinar that is really going to help people sort of navigate getting on uh, the you know uh, castle and making sure you're doing it properly because the fines are ridiculous if you uh, don't do it right. So I encourage everyone to go to bombbomb.com slash webinar and sign up for that. That's for Canadian agents. Really want to get into it right away, introduce our um, our guests for today's show. First of all, I'd like to get, uh, introduce Mark Fitzpatrick, who is the CEO at Room. You can get him on Twitter, at Room Mark, which is R-U-H-M-M-A-R-K. And he is 160 twi Twitter bio reads, CEO at Room uh, Inc., destination marketer, quality content, storyteller, uh, marketing estates, yachts, jets, people, etc. look hot on the web. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, our returning champion to the show is Raj Kazar. You can get him on Twitter, at Raj Kazar. He is the principal and owner of the Boutique Real Estate Group at Boutique RE. Just a guy living a dream in Orange County, California. Welcome, Raj. Thanks, Michael. Great to see you again, and Dave, great to see you as well. Now, we've heard your spiel before, Raj. You are uh, doing some really great stuff in your boutique uh, office there in Orange County. Opened up your second one, or right, ready to open up the doors any day now, I'd imagine, if you haven't already. But we yeah. don't know the history uh, of, of Mark in the real estate space. So for our viewers, Mark, why don't you give us a little bit of history about who you are, real estate, and then give us a, a quick synopsis of what Room is. Yeah, quickly. Okay, let's see. In 2003, I started in real estate sales and uh, kept going till 2009 when I started my own company after getting my broker's license. And the focus of that company was going to be very much uh, more like a you know a, 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 an ad ad agency that does video, photo, storytelling, etc. Uh, when we pitch our properties and get people emotionally invested into them. Um, it's just I started hiring this crew of people and we were so in love with the marketing part that eventually we just decided let's separate out and become a marketing company only, not a brokerage and go after the, the big properties around the world and be able to assist agents and their clients in making those properties wherever they are look phenomenal to the people who are uh, potential buyers for those properties. So that's what we did. Uh, we just incorporated in uh, January of this year and we're having a blast uh, growing and uh, figuring this out. So you're not a brokerage. You are going to be really working hand in hand with the agent to do the stuff that they aren't really skilled or qualified to do and that's the marketing end. Um, yeah. and, and, and we're going to get into some of the really cool things you're doing but primarily your services would lend itself to 10 million plus properties. Is that sort of the marketplace where you figure that your your value is greatest? 
uh, I think it's worth having a conversation starting at three million. Probably not going to work out unless we're hitting around the five to six million, but definitely above eight million would uh, would provide an opportunity for it to work out. Because basically, the short of it is is that there's not a shortcut to what we do. It's a lot of time and effort and travel and expensive equipment and everything else, and it's not cheap. And you and and you literally mean that as far as travel goes. Someone gives you a phone call in London with a spectacular piece of property, you're putting a crew on a plane and going to London. Absolutely. Like the one uh, we recently did in Maui, flew a crew of 10 people out there for about uh, 12 days and shot a short film, a documentary, all the photo and video, etc. Came back, stitched it all together in a story, and we think we've uh, tallied it up to higher than 1,500 hours of work that has gone into it. Uh, and then after that work's all done and everything looks great, then we uh, have our PR team PR it to magazines, newspapers, bloggers, etc. to get it basically covered so that we get as many eyeballs on it as possible. Now, it, now Raj, you've said on the show, I, like, I, I, I turn to Raj as he turns away, but Raj, you've said on the show many, many times that, that, that we're real estate agents and we're not stagers and we're not marketers and, 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 and we really have to you know, keep in mind about what we do if someone comes along and has a 10 or 15 million dollar property there's no way that they can also be world class marketers it's not good enough to be okay at marketing and so so at video when you're representing a 15 million dollar property it has to be a 15 million dollar marketing job so do you see that that's sort of where room will come in to, to take over the the lifting that an agent just isn't qualified to do yeah michael that's a great question i think that at that price point, that $5 million, $10 million, $15, $20 million plus, it's a different talent that needs to be absorbed by the seller. And a lot of these people that are high net worth clients, they've got services for just about everything they do. And I think it's so important that um, maybe the agents step away from that piece of the puzzle and allow like tenured, seasoned, and educated creatives to be able to do the work and push it out there. I think that's what's amazing about Mark's story and Room's story here is that they're able to do that at any price point um, in that luxury market. And the agent looks amazing. Are you kidding me right now? Like, I would die to have my face on that $20 million listing, right? And the work's all done for you. That's the brilliant part of it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of think that's how I thought. If I was going up against someone else in a, in, for, for a $10 million property, I would turn a room before I went into my listing proper, uh, presentation and say, what, what are we going to be able to do and go to the table with, here's what we're going to do, and then talk about, obviously, how that's going to be cost out, what not. But, sorry, Dave, Dave's calling time out. Dave wants to come in. Come in here, Dave. Time out. Time out. Um, for 99% of our viewers, uh, we guarantee you, don't go away, because I know most of you guys do not have $10 million listings, or it's a once-in-a-lifetime career in your career. Um, but we're going to find a way in the end to connect some of this, I hope, with some of the things that these guys are doing here with these Absolutely. $10 million properties to your $400,000 properties. There's going to be some ideas and takeaways, so don't go away, guys. We got stuff for you. And that's why Dave's here. He, I get, I get excited about I'm the topic, here. and that's a great point, Dave. We are, we are going to try to roll it back because um, there isn't a $10 million property in my neighborhood. So, But, but here's um, the thing, Michael. Here's the, here's the brilliance. Um, those agents that are selling four and five and six and eight, I mean, they come to me. They're in our brokerage, too, and they want to get to that next level. And I think this is an opportunity with the, some of the connections they have that every single agent in the world is saying they are different. They are different. But with this, that sets them apart, right? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. if you're able to do that at that level and tell the story and stitch together the creative and then have a full-time PR team, pushing it out for you, uh, like the Hawaii house they did, hit the Wall Street Journal, and a ton of others. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. You can't do that as an agent. It's impossible. And, and, and here's the other thing, too, about it, and I want to get into the nuts and bolts, but but but, but I, I want to get into the, the, the actual creative and the emotion part of it first because that's really what this is all about. I, you know, the the people buying the the real estate in my marketplace are probably live within about a half an hour of 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 the property already. But a place in Hawaii, without an amazing online presence, without some amazing assets that encourages someone in New York City to get on a plane and come take a look at it, it just can't be average because 
you don't know where your buyer is, but they're probably not down the street because by even the definition of what you've called it is you've called it destination marketing, meaning that the person isn't already there. Yeah, Michael, I think that it's not enough for uh, an agent to say, hey, look, I, I'm going to make sure your property can be seen by anybody in the world. I mean, we can do that with a click of a button now. That's what the Internet did. Any property that's on the market can be seen by anyone in the world at any time. So what's the really important thing there is not if they can see it, it's what they see when they do get there and see that property on that medium that they're used to watching. You know, that's most people, it's a laptop or mobile or whatever. They're looking for property and it's the quality of what they see and how it brings them into the property and gets them emotionally engaged to it. So gone are the days of saying, hey, uh, we're international, we're going to get your property seen everywhere because that's just handled. It's handled automatically. That's done. We need to make people fall in love with our properties. So Dave, um, I sent you out a couple links of a couple of most recent projects that Room has done and, and, and really because we haven't chatted about it before but just how, what, what did it make you feel? What, what, what was the experience like? Because it is different than anything we've experienced before in, in, in the way that a home is presented. It's just it's a different beast. It absolutely was, and I mean, I watched it. I couldn't stop watching. Um, and you know, and I'm not looking for a four or five million dollar property right now, but it, it was interesting. It was like a little, it was like a little movie, and it kind of put me, it put me there. It took me from where I was to there. And um, I, I, and in it, you know, talk going back to our four hundred thousand dollar buyers. There's a, there's things in there that I could do with an iPhone that they're doing with this high end on ten million dollar properties. You know, just little, little, little things. You know, be yourself. I mean, we've talked about them in the past, but there's going to be there's a lot of takeaways there. And I, I thought it was fascinating marketing, fascinating. And like yeah. Raj said, you have no choice. If you have a ten million dollar, fifteen million dollar property to sell, you have to do this kind of marketing. I don't think you have much choice. I I, it, I, I think the seller does, and I also think the agent has to. I mean, if well, it's absolutely, the you don't deserve you don't deserve the commission on that if you're just going to put up an iPhone video. I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. So, so one of the real neat things, Mark, you did with the uh, with a Hawaii property, and I don't know if you want to say the what's the what's the website address of that particular property. Uh, well, you pronounce it Hale Ali'i in Hawaii, and uh, that's uh, H A L E A L I I dot com, or an easier way to get there would be ninekapalua dot com. Okay. Now you tell me that. <laughs> now you tell me that's how you get there. <laughs> and 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 it's amazing. It's amazing uh, uh, visuals. There's 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 amazing, beautiful written word. There's incredible photography that almost or does move. I mean, it's 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 amazing. And then there's a video, much like the books that I grew up on, which it's a it's a choose your own adventure. You start and you kind of the, are are the character in the movie, and as it goes along, you get to make choices about how the story is going to unfold and. One of the things I'm sure you guys have seen this with your uh, with, with with your data is I think a lot of people go back and are forced to rewatch the movie just to take the other route to see what 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 would have happened in the other way and I found myself doing that for sure um, and the storytelling is so much larger than the piece of real estate I mean the piece of real estate almost plays a, a, a back not a back role but there's so much more that is being told it's an experience and. Uh, um, just talk about the thought process and the creative behind putting something like a choose your own adventure home tour together. Yeah, it was an idea that came up when uh, we were brainstorming prior to going to the project, and uh, we liked it. And it was, uh, you know, rem reminiscent of when we were kids and, and reading those books, like you mentioned. And we thought, hey, if we put this together, it will get attention on the website uh, from people who just want to experience that. And, and see what that's like. And the attention for the website, uh, and attention meaning just hits or whatever, but also coverage from uh, different places like uh, Hot Living here that actually has a presence here at uh, Inman. They covered us uh, and the property last week, which was great. And ultimately, that gets more eyeballs on the property. Um, as far as the, that video in, in the house really kind of taking a, a, a back seat, uh, with the way we look at it is the rest of the site is all about the house. And the majority of that video is about understanding the Aloha spirit, understanding what it means to uh, experience Maui and kind of slow down to that uh, more of a relaxing uh, pace that uh, the typical businessman from uh, New York or Chicago or whatever is definitely not used to. So that's the experience that the character goes through. He kind of learns what it's like to uh, experience Hawaii. 
Um, Raj, you filmed a lot of these sort of storytelling type videos now. You've got a lot of them underneath your belt. What would you identify as those key ingredients that go into making a great bread? You need water, you need yeast, you need flour. Uh, but then you can experiment with other things to make breads different. But what are those key elements that you see in the stuff that's room do uh, that, that 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 room is doing, and that you have done, that that when we're watching these videos as agents, like Dave Dave says, what should agents be looking for as those key ingredients before getting super creative that they have to nail these certain key ingredients from point A to point B? Yeah, well, a lot of time the marketing comes from like a passion that's inside, and that passion inside wants to tell a story, and that story is needs to be told. And we know that when buyers see the story, they're emotionally connected. And that is the experience. That's not a transaction. That's not e-signing. That's not anything mobile, but it's an experience that's felt inside. And and that is the brilliance of, um, and the fun, actually, of what we're doing. So we stopped thinking like real estate agents years ago, and we're thinking like an ad agency. What Room now is doing is creating a, a complete brand like, they're launching a brand for a house. Okay, let yeah. me say that again. They're launching a complete brand for one single house. Hey, Chris Smith. How are you doing, sir? One single house. Say it, buddy. What's up, fellas? Hey, Chris. How you doing, man? Mike. Hey, these guys are legit. Rom? I like <laughs> Rom and I like Rom. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We knew this was going to happen. <laughs> well, they're going to happen. We're going to have. We're going to have cameos. I know we're going to have a few of these cameos. Yeah, I got Lisa. I got Lisa Archer here with me. You know, we got we got the A team today. Sorry to interrupt the show, but you know I'm a big fan, though, Mike. I won't. Yeah, you know, you know, Chris. As long as Lisa doesn't have her T-shirt yeah. cannon, or is, uh, is that what she's rolling around <laughs> with nowadays? Yeah, she she put the T-shirt cannon back in the holster. Got it. <laughs> they wouldn't let me have it. Yeah. I'm kind of pissed off about it. Cool. Well, I feel bad interrupting you guys, Mike, but I wanted to say what's up. That's all yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Awesome stuff. Thanks, brother. All right, so that's fun, right? Yeah, that's it's great. Fun. If I pan like this, you'll see the the, the kind of waiting room of the kids who want to get some airtime. Look at right. Valerie Garcia. Yeah. Where's my girl? Bob, Guy Johnson, Bob Watson, <laughs> Terry Conrad. Look at what's up, Zach? So hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> so anyway, real quick, I know we don't, our time's limited, but the brilliance of what I was saying is a brand for a single property. I mean, we've la we launched our brand about a year and a half ago. It, it's sweat, blood, and tears. These guys are traveling the country, the world, launching brands for individual individual properties. And that, that's what that's why I'm in love with it. Um, um, Mark, um, what what is the reaction being uh, for the agent, which is obviously so 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 important? He's just a little. Hey, 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 hey. there's Jeremy. Jeremy. That's Jeremy Lehman. Little boutique presence in the house. Um, uh, Mark, what is the? Um, uh, <laughs> it's great. I love it. Uh, what what has been the reaction for the agent, which is a key factor, and then what what is the reaction being from the 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 homeowner that is ultimately having an experience like they've never experienced before wasn't marketed that way when they purchased the property ten years ago five years ago what is that being the result of, of of the way the the agent looks in the eyes of the marketplace and to other potential buyers and sellers and how and how is the the reaction being for the actual consumer yeah the the agent uh, responses to what we're doing has been mixed some of them are very forward thinking and they think hey how can I use this as a tool in my toolbox to go out and win that listing or go out and get my extension on a listing that's expiring or you know show that we're the best in the area because we bring in this team um, and, then, and, and then when we produce everything that we produce like like we did this book here for uh, the Hawaii property and the agent obviously gets to be there and it pretty much looks like that agent did all the work on the property so it, when we get it published in Wall Street Journal and their names on it and if people go to the site they end up getting phone calls and we have records of those phone calls and hopefully those turn into more business for the agent where they can sell another twenty million dollar property but the, the exposure for them has been phenomenal as far as the sellers go uh, so far they've been falling in love with it um, every aspect of it they love the whole planning part they like getting in involved with it when they can they're very been very accommodating uh, they like to see uh, their home uh, be famous 
uh, and be made to look so amazing online and have a story told about it and to have that much attention, that much time and effort being given to marketing something that is really important to them. So it's it's been a very positive experience there with them. As far as buyers go, I once had a lady come in after uh, experience one of our websites. She got into escrow on a property over the asking price and is a three million dollar range property. And she told our agent, "Hey, after I went home that night, after I saw the property, I went through your website and I watched the people talking about the property and how it was built and the care that went into it. And I watched the neighbors talking about the area." And I told my husband, do whatever you need to do to buy this property because I fell in love with it. And that's like the, the, the best, that's exactly what we're going for, you know, to get that emotional person involved in the purchase. If you think about the way that luxury brands of the world market their stuff, it isn't by giving statistics and a stale photo. It's by very carefully crafting a story where we go and reach out and grab those emotions and get them get them interested and involved that way. You um, you described uh, room and destination marketing as a hybrid of real estate know why and marketing know how, and 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 I think I think a lot of us have one or the other. We know how to do something, but we don't really know why we're doing it. We know why we should do it, but we don't necessarily know how to go about doing it. And especially at a, a a high high level. That being said, and I asked Raj this question when we were having dinner together a couple months ago, and and, and I didn't get an answer because I think it's a difficult question, but it's a question that Dave and I would like to have two amazing expertise like you um, try to try to explain. If you've ever watched daytime television, I haven't, but if you've ever watched daytime television or news, sometimes they bring out the latest fashions. And they say this one costs seven hundred and eighty dollars, and this one costs twenty five ninety five. And they're not the same dress, but they're similar look. They have the same sort of feel. For most people, at a four hundred thousand dollar price range or six hundred thousand dollar price range, what should we be as agents doing on a limited budget that aren't doing what you're doing? What should we be aware of, or cognizant of, or, or ways to differentiate yourself on a more limited budget and still try to give the feeling? Of a unique experience when it comes to the way we market properties. Yeah, that's a good question. Everybody, listen up to the answer here because this is why we're here. I was I was so wanting to get videos on uh, real estate uh, back in 2007, 2008, and a very limited budget at that time, and actually sought out uh, college age guys that had the experience and everything to do it. Well, first I tried to teach myself, and then I was like, man, I, I'm. I'm a salesperson, not a videographer and, and editor and everything else that you need to be. So I sought them out and their price was too high. So what I did was I said, okay, if you can do the work for me, we put this together, I'll pay you twice that amount when it sells. So whatever, you know, the bid that they gave me, I can't remember exactly what it was, but that's the way to get into it. That's the way to get them wanting to give you a good product because now they want your to help you sell that property so they can get twice what they originally said that they were going to do the video for and that actually never doesn't cost you anything up front and something that you can get done now the great thing about having that is that hopefully you pick somebody out that does a good job and that you help you help your client sell the home for a higher price and then your value just went up, your brand value, because you provided that for a client, and you get to go tell that story to the next client about how you had that success, and you can do it again and do it again and do it again. And you figure out ways to shortcut a little bit here and there, and then add things additional to it, like graphic design and uh, some more uh, social marketing, etc. And you get people who are very skilled at what they do to do it, but just be create creative and figure out a way to get it done for a little bit less at the beginning. Raj, any advice on that question? Yeah, for sure. So for me personally, it started with photography. I went out and bought the fancy camera, and I tried to take it myself, and I was putting the flash the wrong way, and it, it just it was just a mess. So I hired photographers, and then when I got the photos back, I mean they were great, but I, I felt like they didn't look like they did in the magazine. So then it was a graphic designer, right? We've had this talk before. That was my first official in-house hire, was a graphic designer. That's where we started. So those little tweaks make you stand out at that price point. Uh, it makes, Dave, makes that $400,000 listing look like an $800,000 listing. That's that perceived value that Mark's talking about, 
with that you just increase the value not only of, for the seller, your client, but your own personal brand. And and that's actually something that that, that that's in the write up about room that I find interesting is this is this expression of perceived value. And that's really what you're doing. I mean, staging is the perception that the house is got a better floor plan or the perception that it's more square footage. It's, it's all marketing is the perception because when it really gets down to the drywall and the two by fours, um, unless your staging is actually making improvements on the house, it's all about this perceived because real estate is so emotional, that's where you have a chance to make that leverage. Like you said before, Mark, is in the, the, the emotion equals not even perceived value because it ends up being real value. Yeah, exactly. You know, you were talking about the two dresses that look alike and you're going to pay a lot more for the one that's in Nordstrom because of the presentation. There's a reason why there's a guy playing the piano at the escalators and there's a reason why you're treated the way you are in Nordstrom and you're going to you're going to pay for it. In 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 the way we market, the way Raj is marketing, it's a way where subconsciously the person expects to pay more for that property because of the way it's presented. If you think about even the when we go to a great restaurant and they put the food down in front of you, they didn't just plop it on the plate, it's all nicely decorated on your plate and you know you're going to pay more for that as part of the presentation and service. So, 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 Dave, when 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 you look at this too, as well, the the the, the thing about when well, we watched it online, uh, Dave, there the stuff that Room's doing, but they have a mix of traditional PR, they have print media, they have a uh, video. You know, even in a real mobile online world, they're still leveraging all these different high touch points of of tangible a assets as well as online assets and. That's the one thing I think we're so eager to switch the way we've done it. And you're you're a person that says, you know, let's not go all willy nilly and let's and let's keep marketing, you know, in, in, in effective ways. And there's still that place for touch tangible marketing. Well, from my from my perspective, when I looked at it, it it, it was almost I don't I don't know it was mesmerizing to me because there were so many different aspects. It was video. There was still video. There was video moving. There was interaction. There was a story, and it was a lot. It was a, I think every aspect of what these guys do is all incorporated into one one piece of marketing, and that was that video that I watched. It wasn't just a video. It was a lot of stuff there. And I well, well Dave, yeah. that's exactly it. They launched a brand for that house. That's it. And it, and it doesn't start stop with print or digital. Or staging. Sometimes you forget staging is the buyer's in the house, and it's an emotional feeling in the house. The space feels better. You're able to flow through the space better. Staging is near and dear to me personally. All our listings get staged. I mean, it's your opportunity from that online presence to in real life presence that that buyer has, and the feeling that they had digitally. Now they have it in the space physically. That's what I love about that. Right. And, and I can only imagine for Mark, uh, is in the conversation that we had with Raj the last time he was on the show, was, I mean, you, you, you basically have to plan that you're going to put the house on the market two months from now because it's taking you that long to do creative. It's not like you're putting the, you're putting the sign in the lawn and saying, as we get print stuff done, we're going to start to launch it out. So, so how does that process work for you guys with, with, with knowing that someone wants to market a piece of property but saying, hold on, you've got to give us a couple months to get things uh, all lined up? Yeah, uh, you're right. It does. There's a lot goes into it. There's a lot of planning, and we just have to get the seller on the same page. I mean, there's been times before where they said that just won't work, so we told them we're not going to be able to do quite as much. And but if their property's ready to go and there's not much staging needed, then we can get out there pretty quickly. We we meet and brainstorm pretty quickly. I got a lot of talented people on the crew, so we come up with a, a good idea about how to tell the story of that property get out there, film, and then post, and we can probably get things going in about as little as three weeks on some places, but then other places will take quite a bit longer, like the Hawaii property for, for uh, sure definitely took longer. Regarding uh, what you were saying about different uh, marketing mediums, uh, I think that what's important there is that, yeah, you can use different things and you still use print and people love the tactile feel, they love touching things still, but the, the bad marketing would be marketing that you're not measuring. So what I mean there is on this print, on this print piece that we have, the phone number and the email address are actually, I'm, the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, web page and the phone number are actually different so that we know if people are responding to that print, you know, and if we're sending it to a certain group of uh, whether they be CEOs of Fortune 500 companies or 
people that own certain homes or whatever we're, we're going after, we can measure those results and see if it's, we're effectively using the marketing dollars that we're spending. And if you're doing that, then the marketing's good. If you're not, then you're be, you're, it's not, I mean, it's just how do you keep moving, how do you make decisions about how to spend your, uh, your dollars most effectively and, and run the best business that you can? That's one of our mantras here on Mobile Agent TV, and that's if you can't measure it, don't do it. There you go. Don't yeah, do smart. It. Um, um, a question that I've asked quite often, uh, uh, because it's it's one that I want to keep hammering home to people, and I, I certainly are not a world class expert at it. It's hard. Why why is simplicity and cleanliness in marketing so elusive, so difficult to 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 get right when? When the thought is it's it's simple, it should be easier, but clean and sim simple and sexy is difficult. Let me take that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when, I mean, when we were launching our brand in 2013, I mean, I wanted the exact opposite of what everyone else was doing. I didn't want a web page or a website that was so cluttered with information, you just bounced right off it. That's not, I wanted the message to be clean, crisp, and clear, and right there in front of you. So the interesting part of what people try to do is they have a lot to say and they want to show it all in one spot. I, I think the beauty of design and a thought process that evokes a strategy is it's there and it's like it's almost like touching Mark's booklet for the Hawaii property. It's online and you feel like you can touch it and it's easy to navigate and you can get where you want to go. I've seen my own family members or friends, they're on, on their phone and they're trying to pull something up and they just can't do it and they're out of there. They're out in three seconds, right? Yeah. So the beauty is uh, agents are agents and we want to sell, we want to make relationships, we want to build relationships, we want to meet more people. Creative, that's why we shouldn't be doing it at all, right? Yeah. I mean, there yeah. may be a, a direction or um, a way you want it to look, but it shouldn't be done by the agent, right? So that's Mark. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you, I mean that's you're right. It's I would just add that we will get together frequently and say, what can we get rid of on this? And uh, it's to simplify things down. I mean, even uh, today uh, there was an app. Some guy's talking about an app that he was pushing out, and they're trying to get it down to four touches to basically, uh, you know, have a hotel for that night rather than the average of 52 touches. And you're going to have much higher conversion rate. You're going to be able to get lead, lot better leads. The more simple and clean the process is. And that's the more people are attracted to it. Again, the bounce rate's going to go down, like Raj was saying. Yeah. Okay. One last question before uh, before we wrap your segment up here, Mark and Raj, uh, and it com comes back to what Dave was talking about with with the normal normal agents. But do you think it would be wise for an agent to put together? And we talked about this story uh, with uh, Ma uh, uh, Matthew Pereira, but almost an a la carte menu. For your for your clients, when you go and say, "Here's my marketing package," but if you want a video, it's this price. If you want a 3D floor plan, it's this price. Because then, at least they're being invested in those things. Because in a lot of agents out there, they don't have that budget to go ahead and do this. Do you think we're going to see agents put together an a la carte menu where, if you want to have a tactile, beautiful four-page uh, uh, printout? That you'll choose that versus you know and and sort of have that as an upfront investment for the homeowner is that a way that 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 an agent at a lower price point can do some really great marketing? Absolutely, I think it's a great idea uh, to be able to bring something in that uh, they otherwise would not have been able to bring into the equation, and I think the seller should be able to have uh, those options of having a step up in marketing and paying for it. Um, if, if there is a, a way to do that uh, effectively and get, get them interested in investing into the sale of their home, I love that idea. If you have somebody invested into the sale of their home, that means they're a seller. They're not putting their toe in the market and just seeing what happens, but they want to sell and they're serious. Um, everybody that hires us is definitely invested into the sale of their home and that's why part of the reason why I think we have such great working relationship with them. So, so, so the seller becomes your becomes your partner in this too, as well as far as a financial skin in the game. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Raj, any advice on, on how have you got to a point where you're at a lower price point with someone else in your office? Uh, because I know in your marketplace, the you know you have a wide range between beach homes and apartments. Ha, ha, has there ever been a point where the homeowner says, you know what, I really like what you guys did with this particular piece of property. I know it's not in the commission budget, but can I can I can that be an add-on? Yeah, for sure, 100%. I mean, we've taken some rather large homes that were completely vacant, and we've had a staging budget for them. So, or we'll charge more instead of the standard commission. We'll charge a little bit more, where some of it's paid up front and some's paid at the end. I mean, it really just depends. Every situation is totally different. So, yeah, I'm all for it. And like Mark said, you've got a real seller there. They're committed to sell, and it brings like a partnership. Um, a little bit. It's a little closer than it would be otherwise. So, Dave, I mean, maybe that's maybe that's what we, what we do is we we put together an a la carte menu and throw it in front of them, and they can say they won't have the number seven and the number eighty-two. Oh, I can see. <laughs> Like a Chinese restaurant. I, I, I can see the advantages to it. Um, however, on the other, on the flip side of it, I mean, I think there's also benefits to the to the agent that if you do that kind of marketing on one property, you know, it's going to lead to other other properties you're going to list. Um, you know, you can be known as the person who does this thing over everybody else and, and, and you know control your market. So you know, there's there's two sides to it. And but you know, if you don't have the budget to go ahead and do those kinds of things, absolutely have the seller. Put some skin in the game. That's just uh, what they're talking about. Yeah, perfectly cool. Uh, Mark, can't thank you enough. Um, can you can you give us all your contact info, where people can find room, all that sort of stuff? Uh, let 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 people find out how they can find you. Yeah, really easy. Room.com. R U H M. I got a question. Sorry, 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 Mark. Go ahead. Oh yeah, no problem. R U H M. dot com. Uh, Mark M R K at room. dot com. Uh, room Mark is my handle on uh, Twitter. And then just reach out on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, happy to join up and talk about whether it involves us or not. I'm happy to talk about any ideas or plans you you, you may have for some of your listings. Uh, the other thing that I would say really quick is that we're excited about building relationships with agents around the country to not only have them potentially introduce us to a situation where we can come in, but also there's going to be situations where we end up having a listing that we'll be able to introduce to an agent that has no agent attached to it. It's already happened a couple times. So uh, we're eager to build those relationships. If that's you, then feel free to reach out. Happy to chat. Awesome. So if you've got a $10 million property in Paris, that's the guy you get a hold of. <laughs> I'll bring up the crew. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you.